where to assign the non-binary. Ooh. And the dilemma is... Non-binary gender people are now acknowledged and accepted worldwide. Crime in the non-binary world is picking up. You have the decision to make. Do you build non-binary gender prisons or assign them to their born sex? You know what? I feel like some people would think that I'm on drugs coming up with these type of dilemmas, but it, <laughs> I've never taken any drugs in my life, and yet I, I feel like I'm high when I when I think of these things. All right, so... <laughs> So yeah, so that's it. So Ali, my lovely co-host, will be giving you all the megaphones individually so that we can hear your thoughts, answers, and ideas. And we'll start with Teresa. Welcome back again and welcome to The Moral Dilemma. You have the opportunity Teresa, to hi, speak hi. or pass. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say, like, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with calling a child he or she or boy or girl because a person's gender is something that's biological. Does that make sense? Like, if if you were to take a child to the doctor and the doctor were to ask, okay, is are they male or female, you would have to answer, um whether or not they're male or female because it's it's important information for the doctor to know um but in my opinion if a child decides that they prefer to be called he or she or 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 they or if they prefer to be called by gender but just be called they instead gender neutral i think you should respect that um if that's what they prefer um, but that's, that's usually not something that a person decides until they're teenagers from, from my experience. Does that make sense? So Teresa, would um, you build a non-binary gender prison for them or assign them to their no, um, sex? Uh, I, I, I would not consider that a prison. I would consider that simply referring to them as uh, uh, their a biological gender because um, because of biology, not because of discrimination or anything. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I just need to mute you, Teresa, and then I'll bring you back. I just need to correct something respectfully, uh, Teresa, and that is gender is not biological sex is biological sex is what you are gender is what you feel and gender they've now assigned th there's according to uh, society there's over 52 different types of genders when it comes to sex uh, you're either born a male or a female or in some really rare cases a hermaphrodite um, so yeah so just so you know, gender is what you feel. And that's why I said assign them to their born sex. There, there is a difference. Uh, but yeah, if you have something to say, then you can raise your hand as well. Let's head over to Dylan. What do you do with these criminals? And, and, and I'm not saying that not, not, I'm not saying all non-binary people are, are criminals. I'm saying that within the realm, there are going to be non-binary people that are going to commit crimes. So yes. Well, I... I think this is an interesting dilemma because you had this sort of with the bathrooms in the United States and a lot of Southern states and Republican states, they didn't want transgender uh, male to female uh, people using female bathrooms. And in prisons in general, I've noticed that uh, usually they separate people by sex and by whether they're gay or even by gang affiliation because they found out that if you have people that are perceived as a different affiliation, you know, it could actually be very dangerous for them. So you definitely don't assign it to the gender they're born in because can you imagine, uh, you know, this is a horrible thing to say, but a man, you know, someone who identifies as a woman but still might look like a man, if they're in a male jail or going to a male bathroom, they could end up getting beat up. 
or kill, but you know, this is a new, this is hard to determine because this is a new concept. I think it's only existed, you know, open in public for like the last 10 years, you know, like with people like Caitlyn Jenner, but that's my thought. Thanks. Thank you, Dylan. Caitlin, um, for those of you that have that have just joined us, I just want to say, um, please seat, please have a seat on the couch. For those of you that want to, there, I see some of you guys harassing some of my members. Harassment is not is not allowed in the room. Let's just stick to the rules and just respect everybody that's here as well. Sorry for interrupting. I just needed to make that clear. Uh, I just kick them out. I don't even ask questions. And thank you for understanding. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Let's head over to Halion Aeon. Hello and welcome. Right. Yes. Okay. Can hey, you hear me? Hi. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we hey. can. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, very interesting dilemma, this one. Now, I think from a purely practical point of view, because um, from what I've seen of this topic, there's, there's, there's an entire spectrum of um, oh, something like 50 odd names that are added to to describe the, very, the sort of spectrum of gender perceptions and people even consider themselves to be star genders and all sorts of things like that you know alien genders and things um and it just wouldn't be practical to build <laughs> that many prisons if you were going to build it for every type you know to build specifically to each one so i suspect you would have to um you know just have the current male female presence but you may well as dylan was saying you may well have to um you know, if, if people feel very strongly about their, um, their perceived gender, then you might have to have uh, areas, some sort of partitioning set aside. But um, I think it's it's very difficult. And there is, you know, it's not a clear thing. Um, uh, so I think just from a pure... And also, you wouldn't be able to assign them to their born sex because there are trans people who you know, they might be born female and end up considering they're male. So... I don't think you could, well, <laughs> um, it's a difficult one, you know, because they'll have, some have operations and stuff like that. So um, it's a difficult one, but I just think from a purely practical point of view, there's there's no way you're going to build specific prisons for every um, particular shade of uh, gender mm. section. All right. You know, you can help them out, yeah, partition them off if they feel it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a tricky one okay. because... Yeah. And it's also... It, Hell yeah, yeah it, yes, sorry. It's also, it's non, it's, sorry, yeah, it's not entirely symmetric as well, because, of course, I, um, I can imagine that, you know, uh, in a female prison, they might be a, rather more worried if some enormous chap came in, <laughs> hmm. um, but saying that they consider themselves female, you know, gender-wise, yeah, yeah. which can happen, um, but, you know, you could understand them being a bit, um, a bit worried about the uh, showers and things like that. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, sorry to, but you know, I just think from a practical point of view, you you probably have to have some other partitioning. Uh, a lot of places at the moment have male loos, female loos, and uh, well, you know, other loos, whatever yeah. term they use. For and them as well. and disabled because yeah. they're always separated. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very they often. Need more space. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. All right, thank you. Anyway, awesome, perfect. thank you. Uh, let's Navy Spider. Navy Spider, you have the opportunity to speak or pass. Hello, you all right? All right, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, good, thanks. Hello, I'm good, thank you. All right, so yeah, this subject's a little bit weird. Like, it's not weird, sorry. It's um, it's quite a difficult subject to be honest. But honestly, I think like people should not be assigned to their born sex. I think how it should be is obviously after, like he said over there, after a teenage stage of you actually being able to fully acknowledge your gender, if you want to, or is it is it gender? Yeah, if you want to change your gender, um, you should do that maybe after the age of 18 because that's when all your brain cells seem to develop. And after that point, uh, then I reckon if someone chooses to be a male, then they should go to a male prison because... 
that way they um like because they've chose to do that in a sense but then it's one of them again if I wonder if the males who are there would feel comfortable with that female going into there that's actually turned into a male. Mm. You know what I mean? It's really weird. <laughs> but Tricky. I don't know. It's, it's a very difficult subject to touch on, but because everyone's just everywhere, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Have a cigar. Megaphone's yours. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. I think uh, you said about 52 genders now. Uh, I think uh, that is uh, like 50 reasons the Western civilization has gone off the rail. I mean, this is the age of narcissism. Mm. And uh, our civilization is made basically for two genders. And if all people should demand that we change our civilization because they want, I, my suggestion is that all these people, they can go and design their own civilization, go and live, make their own country, their own civilization, and do whatever they like. Because, I mean, this this cannot continue like this, because what will be the next? Say, I identify as a non-criminal person, so you cannot put me to jail, mm. because, you know, I can do whatever I want, I can rob a bank, but I'm not I identify. As a non-criminal person, and I identify as a chicken, so I demand that you eat me. <laughs> and if you don't want to eat me, you're a racist. <laughs> I mean, this is the land of the mad. This is what madness looks like. Mm. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> I just say, those 52 genders or those 50 other genders, go and live in your own country. Make your own civilization. Find an island somewhere and do what you want. Don't bother us with this bullshit. You know, that is my. I I, I feel like there's, what? there's yeah I, I I agree in some points. Uh, other points is that the the way the uh the LGBTQQIPSAA is going, uh it's it's kind of diluting the idea of specificity and uh, speciality. Like Dylan was saying the other day that there is such a thing as a gay gene. Therefore, uh, being gay is not really a social construct. It's it's within the evolution as proven. And then the question is, is it and a the biology? Uh, and then the question is, is it an actual gender? But a non-binary gender, if you don't feel a male or a female, isn't it a lack of the gender? In a way, Ali, it's like which gender are you? And they say, I'm no gender. Uh, almost like saying, which uh, religion are you? And they say, no, I'm an atheist. I'm without a religion. But anyway, I, Look, I, I'm thinking, um, yeah. I want to add something. I want to add my two cents here, right? Yeah. People have different perceptions, the way they feel, whether it's got to do with gender or not. Unless you're in the person's shoes, you can't really... Um, have an opinion about about it i mean it's got to do with the chemistry it's got to do with hormones it's got to do with the dna with the biology mm. and the fact the perception that somebody has you can't really understand it because you can't you're not themselves then you're not them yeah. but i don't know i just want to add um before this discussion continues Let's just stick to the topic. Yeah. And I don't want to go into a racist um, mentality against how these people perceive and go about. So just try, let's just try to keep it real, stick to the topic. Yeah. And just uh, reply with an opinion without getting too emotional about it. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, as soon as as soon as as soon as you become that. as soon as you become emotional, you're thinking of yourself and you're not putting yourself in the other person's shoes. Uh, yeah. where, where I see, I respect everybody's opinions. I just well, wanted to say that. Yes. You, look, Sorry, if, Tim. those who uh, are limited with what they say do not have the freedom of of uh, freedom of choice. Uh, sorry, speech. freedom mm -hmm. of speech. And so, in the moral dilemma. I want to hear what people say, and then we will hear what others have to say about it. Because if you're a racist, mm -hmm. 
you know, don't sugarcoat it. Just admit it. And then maybe, maybe today will be some certain seeds that we planted to say maybe this person is right, which is the whole point of the moral dilemma, you know. But, but but let's let's move on because the way this is going is if there's 52 uh, genders, then yes, absolutely, Helion Aeon, uh, th there are going to be hundreds of genders into the future because think about it just statistically. Right now, there's 78 pronouns, right? So 52, now there's 70 to 8. And the thing is, it's, it's not anymore about how many genders there are, but rather the spectrum that is involved within it. It's like Subway. You can never have all of the Subway um, sources and, and sides because <laughs> there are more a selection than uh, there are uh, atoms on Earth. Doesn't that like blow your mind that every time you have a subway, you, you might be, you're definitely having something that no one else has had unless you've spoken about it. But anyway, okay, let's go to Teddy. Is it Teddy or is it Tedia or help us with the name if we got it right or wrong? Uh, Teddy. 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 Okay, awesome. Hi and welcome. Hi. Yeah, you know, um, for you to say somebody to say that they're race racist or whatever, that's very uh, like a broad stroke. And for anybody, I don't think anybody wants to say that they're racist or anything like that, right? And um, and I get what you guys are saying, but what you but also what you're saying is is that we don't have. Like we're not supposed to speak our mind or say what we want to say, which I don't agree with. I think we should all be able to speak our mind, and I do agree 100%. with the LGB. I do agree with the LGBTQ, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And if 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 you consider yourself a uh, certain type of binary, uh, I respect that. But um, but the only thing I I, I say is the uh, you know, and you guys know it. Uh, don't get upset if, uh, you know, if we say he or she, mm. uh, maybe correct us. If you want to be called by your name, that's fine. Mm. If you want to be called by whatever, that that's also fine. I, I respect that. But to, but uh, very broad strokes to say, if you're a racist, come out and say that you're a racist. Mm. I don't think anybody here, I don't think you'd be here in the first place if you're a racist. Just so, to clear uh, the air. I did not accuse anybody. I did no, not, not say you. anybody said anything. He, he did. I just he said don't it. want we've, it. To, we've had. I we've don't had want yeah, it I, to go down that path. No, and no, I don't I want to. I don't want to get to get offensive. No, but everybody I, is always welcome. I, I, said, it. I, I said it because yeah, we've had it. we've had forty eight different dilemmas. We've had racists. We've had bigots. We've had uh, people that have just been complete idiots or whatever you know in our perception mm -hmm. and uh, i would rather have them say whatever they need to say and then you'll find that when we open the table uh, they either disappear or they actually listen if they listen then they have a chance but well, what what ali was well, saying well, is well, let's stick to the topic I, I, I because this what is you guys are saying, but, but here's yeah, the thing i just, just want to stick to the topic but here's the yeah. thing sometimes they might not know if they're racist or if they're offending anybody it's just it's just who they are and it's just the way they're expressing themselves yeah so at the same time you might think that they're racist or whatever but you're also discriminating against them as well because you're not allowing them to speak their free mind that's all i gotta say yeah i'm i'm, I'm saying speak your okay, mind that's to that's what i'm saying thanks teddy yeah now let's stick to the topic that is the most important because we have mentioned broad aspects today um, and basically the question is, do you build a non-binary gender prison? Uh, do you build non-binary gender prisons or assign them to their born sex? And let's go to Azee. Azee, hi and welcome. Hi. Hello. I always miss the event, so finally I made it here. Okay, it's an interesting topic, and I, I wish I, I said a little bit further so I could uh, listen to everybody. But anyway... I think uh, I know about this concept only theoretically, and I just happened to watch a, a documentary about it yes, just yesterday, and I don't know much about it, but I agree to some certain extent uh, with Have a Cigar that it's uh, a little bit strange that uh, this topic comes up so uh, often. I don't mind people expressing themselves, but ex well, I think there is a golden middle. 
that we should all just respect each other. And honestly, I don't care about the person's uh, orientation or gender or anything. If they're nice people, I don't care, like the way they look or maybe the way they communicate, their manners or something. All I, all I judge people by, and I do judge people, I'm not sure if uh, you want to use that word, but this is certainly what happens inside my head. And I, I see if they're good people or not. And I don't care how they look. And actually, I prefer when I have very many different people in my oh, hello, um, uh, in my uh, circle of uh, communication. So that way, I can learn some some new concepts through these people. Like I don't know many gay people because they're like hiding in Russia. So, <laughs> but in America, I used to have a friend. Uh, who was a very good person in that way I had like a changed perspective on different concepts like that although in Russia I think they're like it's a very common way of thinking about it uh, that oh these are just crazy people like they have no other problems they just like you know um, they I don't know so it's like going into madness or something that's a very common point of view in Russia but still I think uh, if we talk about these prisons I think always down to earth way. So I would think about the actual problems. What is the problem that you may have in prison? Like you could be harassed or raped. And if you concern that that point, I think it could be a problem and that maybe needs taken care of. But at the same time, building separate prisons could be a very uh, big sum of money. So I'd rather suggest something in the middle, like to adapt the existing prisons, having a, like a certain sector for such people and having like, you know, a, a doctor or somebody who's going to uh, follow these things. And I'm not even sure what they need, like in that special prison. I saw some piece of um, a, a TV show or something that they need, like some women, trans women, when they get into men. <laughs> the, who were men and they sit in men's prison they need the hormones injection so that's the, the the difference that they have but my opinion i think that the best way would be this to save the um a lot of money and uh, somebody's safety just putting them in a different section inside the existing prisons yeah i think that's it do you not think Thank that you, there Azzy. will do you, do you not think that there will be discrimination within the other genders in that case is uh, well, I don't. Well, how would you discriminate other people in that way? Well, the you could ask them. The, 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 the I two, think you could ask these people. The androgynous, the and asexuals, the pansexuals. They'll say, "What about us? We also want our own sector." Well, hold on a second. You are criminals, okay? Let's let's start there because this is a place for punishment. So that's the first first point. And uh, the, there's just a, a, a whole spectrum of different um, solutions for this problem because we have to find the golden middle between respect to human rights but, and uh, going crazy and just you know just following somebody's whims. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thanks. Ali. You know who's next, right? Yes. Omni, megaphone is yours. O M N I Y. Hello. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Hi. All right. So I just want to um, say that I actually have a friend that's in prison, and um, he's pen pals with um, a lot of prisoners. You know, they'll um, have a uh, a pen pal system with um, other um, other um, with uh, with. Well, my friend is is male, so like they have like a pen pal system where they can um, set up a pen pal system with female uh, prisoners, you know, so they could talk amongst each other. And my friend is um, pen pals with this other um, woman from a women's prison, and she was telling him that they're actually starting to bring in a lot of these transvestite guys, and she was telling me that a lot of the women aren't comfortable because a lot of the women that are there are there because they've done like you know they've um maybe grew up around violent men and they just you know don't really want to be around men or whatever you know they part of the reason and you know they've committed violent acts to other people because it's just they've been in abusive situations so now they're putting men in these prisons with them that just dress like a woman 
mm. or has some parts and they said that the other women are aren't are and the women like starting to freak out or they're just not comfortable mm. so i do not think this is a good thing to do to like put them in prisons with the uh, with other people if they want to have another section for them sure whatever but um kind of like what as um but like what i would say is that you know like maybe have a section for the all the lb l lg you know like the, i'm sorry like the whole acronym just have a section for all of them together i don't think you have to like separate them or whatever because they're already in a group together protesting for certain rights for themselves just have a section for another prison i don't know about another prison because again that is a, like more money that like, we're going to have to like put into like, you know, taxpayer dollars, we could probably have a section and it could just be separated just by like people's natural genders. You know, if you're born a man or born a certain man, but now you're, you know, like, you know, you're a woman or whatever. Okay, fine. Then you could just go to like a man's prison, but you'll be in like the man woman section or whatever. But, you know, you have a separate, you'll, you'll separate them away from other men. Um, yeah. from, from, I mean, I mean, from other inmates, I think that would be a better situation, but the thing, and the other issue I have about this is that what would start happening is that if they, if they, if they keep an allowing it the way it is, where you just, whatever transgender you, you identify as what's going to happen is that just a lot of men uh, insist to save themselves from going to prison. They could just literally say, hey, well, wait a second, I'm a transvestite. Put me with the female's prison. So therefore, you know, instead of going to the male prison where they're scared and a lot of times they're scared because they're probably going to meet up with the other people. They probably did a lot of bad things and then other gang members will be there and that's probably they're going to end up meeting up with. And, uh, and, and you, know, you know, the other gang members there that hate them. You know, instead of like, you know, going back to that prison, you could just say, hey, put me in with the women prisoner. Now the opposite with women that uh, that um, that um, identify as being a man, I don't think that will ever happen because I don't think women that identify as a man, as men will want to go to a men's prison because you know what? They're most likely going to be raped. I'm sorry to say that, like, I don't mean to in a mean way, but it's probably most likely going to happen. So I think the issue is more with men prisoners that are identifying themselves as a woman now or as transvestites. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You know, Some <clears throat> interesting points considered. Ali, who's Thank next? Thank LJC0719, megaphone's yours. You're welcome to speak or pass. Just waiting for your approval on the megaphone. LJC0719, are you still with us? Nope. Okay, so we both go to the next one. Okay, wait. Let's try again. I see you responding. Okay, there we go. Hi, Al Jesse. Okay, we can't right. seem to hear if, you. If you want to say anything, just raise your hand. Let's head over to Jolly. One more time. Sorry, one second. Al Jesse, can you hear us? Yes. Are you over 18? Nope. Too young. Next, Jolly. Jolly, sorry, one second. Going through our list. Jolly, megaphone's yours. Hi and welcome. Hi, what thank you. Nice finally. To... Hi. Um, I, I, I'm just curious to know if you know there might be anyone here who might not necessarily be from any of the binary genders who may be able to voice their opinion as well because I've heard a lot of opinions on the other side and um, it can be really painful to listen to some of that stuff um, it's sort of made this environment sort of hostile um, but to be honest with you um, I do think that um, 
society has to evolve to accommodate different individuals. And these are people, they do have human rights like everybody else. And if we think back to why prisons were created, it was for the simple reason of uh, prisons were created based on gender separations, was basically to protect women um, who were being sort of um, maybe oppressed in male prisons. And so if we can do that for one gender, then we can do that for other people. They too are people and you know they need to be acknowledged. And I think that's why we're having this discussion. It's not because we're trying to separate anyone or put anybody in a cage separately. They may have committed crimes, but at the end of the day, they're still human beings. And what we're trying to do is to acknowledge their humanity. Great point. Thank you for Thank that you, Jolly. opinion there. Yeah, good stuff. Steve-O. Opportunity to Steve speak or hi, pass. megaphone is yours. Here we go. Hi. Right, can you? Hi, yeah. Um, well, what was I going to say? I thought, thought about this about actually this question. Um, so non-binary gender. I'm not 100% familiar with it. Do they have male genitalia, female genitalia? I'm assuming they've got either or both. So if you're putting them in a prison together in their own binary prison or non-binary prison, whatever you call it, does that not mean it's a mixed prison then? Because you're mixing genetic males and genetic females together. So basically it's a mixed prison. And I thought you didn't want that. I, I didn't think that's what we what we wanted. You need them separate. So the answer for me would be to put them into their, but what they were born as prisons. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you're going it with does, yes. you're going with the you're going to be assigning them to their born sex. Uh, non. Yeah, otherwise, you'll put you're essentially putting them in a mixed prison. Non-binary is somebody who rejects being a male or female, and is in like uh, physically a, they've got. Physically, they physically can they have got the they genitalia. Can, they they have or, yeah. They either they either male or female by sex. Yep. Gender wise, yep. they feel that they are not male or female or anything like that. They feel like they're their own identity. I, it's, but it's physically. It's got nothing to do physically. Still a male or a female. Yeah, it's got nothing to do physically. It's it's something that they have assigned themselves. Yeah. That's okay. I, as um, I can't remember the chap's name down there says, I, I could assign myself as a chicken. Doesn't mean I am a chicken, does it? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not against. Oh, sorry. Uh, you, we'll we'll get back to you, but we got your we got your drift. Um, the, see, non-binary. It's it's not a new thing. It's it might be new in the media and all, but new in the media and all. Non-binary has been going on since 1968, on. and the first. Uh, a person that was non-binary was um, in the U.S. James Clifford, who was born 1963 and was the first person who obtained legal recognition of being a non-binary gender. But the pronoun "they" and non-binary has been yeah, around since the 18th century. Around. All right, let's head over to Wakanda. Uh, Wakanda, I'm just going to have to ask you just to put your volume down that you can hear because we're having an echo from your side. Uh, it's only when I'm talking. It's, it's your volume. Uh, yeah. Your audio. How's that? Hi. Perfect. Hi. Have your name. Hi. Welcome. So um, I want to say that I am a cisgendered black female from Chicago, Illinois in the United States. And I was raised in a middle class neighborhood. And this conversation is so much bigger than talking about what genitals people were born with. Um, for the longest time, especially in Polynesian and African cultures, third gender has been accepted as something that was just natural before we had all these labels on everything. People born hermaphrodites, people born asexual, um, oh dear, we lost you there. Let's try again. There we go. Is that better? Welcome back. Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay, so people that were born as hermaphrodites, people that were born third gender um, and things like that, I the conversation goes so much bigger than do we assign them to a prison based on the sex that they were born? What about people that were born multiple sexes? What if what about people that were born that have absolutely no no idea of who they are? And to make someone else's point sense. earlier about people being um, 16 and 18 years old and finally being able to make that decision, um, I feel it's really important. Um, putting men in a prison with women or women in a prison with men because they feel a certain way is completely different than somebody being born a certain way. Sexuality is not gender. And being able to know the difference between somebody's sexuality, which is the majority of the LGBTQ community, mm. versus somebody who defines themselves as non-binary gender because of God knows what is going on, it's really hard. I work in social services with children and teenagers that are going through the same problem, you guys. And to put them away and say, oh, we need to let them have their own country, let them make their own rules. It, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. We're all still human beings at the end of the day. We're all human. To make another point is they're criminals. And to continue to make certain concessions for criminals because they want to feel a certain way, it's no different than somebody saying, I'm a vegan, and because I'm in prison with a whole bunch of carnivores, I need you to make concessions for me. You're in prison. You've done something bad, and prison is punishment. Um, putting them together in their own community block where if everyone is there that identifies as gender or, or non-binary or however they want to do it is another way to look at it. Um, but they're still going to be fighting among themselves. Even if you put all the LGBTQ, PS, whatever, you know, codes that they have for each other now in the same thing, it's no different than you put somebody in an American jail and the blacks go to their people, the whites go to their people, the Mexicans go to their people, and they create their own cliques amongst themselves. It's not going to be any different if you all put them together. Um, I just think that the question needs to be look at a broader spectrum. We're all human. These people deserve to have certain amounts of rights, but they're also prisoners and they don't deserve to have all the benefits of everything. Like you still can't vote when you're a prisoner and uh, not here in the United States, but you know, not having to hide who they are is a big part of it too. And a lot of the people that are there that are that way we don't know what kind of life they lived before that you know the gentleman over here in the jacket made a perfect thing i wish there was someone from this community or one of the kids that i work with that would be able to be here and represent themselves um to speak for it because we as people most of us being either homo or heterosexual or bisexual making these kind of decisions for people that we wouldn't even dream or fathom or even be able to associate or even contemplate how they're thinking, how their process is, or what they went through to get to be able to be in prison, whether it's selling their body, selling sex, you know, drugs, sex, whatever it is, we don't know what brought them there, but we need to treat people as people and trying to segregate and continuing to build these labels on labels on labels on labels of everything. There is male, female, and third gender. And that's just my personal opinion. Third gender has been there way before we all started making all these other assumptions and labels about everything. So um, this is an absolutely awesome topic, but they don't necessarily need their own prison. We just need to make certain consolations to be able to make sure that they're safe in their own thing, but it's not going to stop them from making their own cliques and segregation. Like if they were their own race, like the gays going with the gays and the bi's going with the bi's, it's not going to change anything. That's going to happen anywhere in prison because it makes them feel comfortable. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very you've much. Given me, uh, awesome. You've given me the next topic for in two weeks time for the moral dilemma. Thank you, Wakanda. 
Uh, for those of you who've just joined, welcome to the Moral Dilemma via VR Digital Citizens. My name is Timon and this is Ali, my beautiful co-host, as we host these once every two weeks. Uh, if you haven't done so, make sure you join the VR Digital Citizens on Facebook, Instagram, and join Oh My Brain page on Facebook for all of the reminders of the events that we host in Old Space. They're all awesome. They're all event discussions, and we love hearing your thoughts and um, ideas. And also, we stream these events live. So you can go to my YouTube, or you can watch on Facebook, and listen to your words of wisdom. All right, let's and head don't over. don't forget to rate us. Yes, rate us. Uh, head over to Zamat. Megaphone's yours. Yeah, hello. Hi. Uh, Hi. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the at the whole uh, at the original dilemma uh, again, and uh, like the whole thing here like uh they now acknowledge and accepted worldwide non non-binary gender people crime in the non-binary world is picking up so uh it doesn't say how 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 many there are or how common is non-binary criminals mm. uh because like if it would have said like uh, uh, a third of the population is now non-binary people uh, and non-binary uh, and crime in the non-binary world picking up. Then, then there might be a demand for non-binary prisons. Uh, uh, per, so then, perhaps there would they they would they would be building those. Uh, uh, I'm not I'm not not sure about that. Or and, but because then then there will be mixed mixed sex prisons but not mixed gender prisons because we would have like male prisons and female prisons and non-binary prison prisons but, but uh, let's say that I, I mean I, I don't have the st statistics I'm not sure how many non-binary non-binary people exist in the world uh, it's not a high percentage I assume I think I met one in my life uh, and then, even if the crime in the non-binary world is picking up, I assume there wouldn't be a high number of criminals anyway, since still quite a few in the world. I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the what the numbers w would be, but um, like I, I'm just thinking maybe the 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 uh, the economical and maybe the the kind of boring answer here that, that if there's a demand for non-binary prisons then yes it it would be built uh if there's not then it wouldn't be economically viable to build them and then they would have to look at the at the individual case and uh, and decide where that person person should be imprisoned uh and and in in that case then probably then they, they they would probably uh assign the the person the to the prison of their uh born sex which mm -hmm. would not be an ideal solution but that's probably what would happen uh probably the and maybe the 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 least bad solution i i i'm not sure about that but yeah i'm I'm uh, I'm thinking about the what 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 demand would there be even if crime in the non-binary world is picking up and they're acknowledged and it's just accepted worldwide what what demand would there be to actually build new buildings and build prisons maybe maybe have like maybe the uh, uh, Cell specific cell blocks for non non binary people um, uh, mm. would be a solution. Uh, it, it all depends on the numbers. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me let me let yeah, me so share. That's my, that's my take on it yeah, right let, now. let me share. So you're hundred percent right that there aren't that many non binary uh, uh, assigned people in this world. 
uh, but it, the, the numbers are starting to pick up. So out of the 10,039 um, uh, survey that was conducted, for example, in 2011, uh, with the Equality and Human Rights Commission, in the UK, they found that 0.4% of them were identified as non-binary, uh, which is just 40 people. Um, that was 2011. I need to find out the... Um, there was then this one um, in 2019 with the two-spirit and LGBTQ population um, where 19% out of 906 respondents identified as non-binary. And why I think the number of non-binaries are starting to pick up is because as people are calling themselves uh, pansexual, asexual, even transsexual, um, the, even a, a percentage of transsexual will say, you know what, I'm not male or female, I am who I am. Sometimes I want to be a man, sometimes I want to be a female. And you see it. Uh, I think drag queens, drag queens like doing that. And they, and they see themselves as both. So as the, the genders and the spectrum picks up, we're definitely going to see a number. But that's why I'm saying that in, in the future, uh, this is more, uh, more to do with the future. As the numbers pick up, then we're going to be dealing with these type of issues. But thank you very much, Zamat. Let's head over to Dr. Sam. Thank you for being here. Dr. Sam, hi and welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. And uh, thank you. A, ve a very interesting topic and probably a very real topic, a real life topic. Just to answer Zamat, uh, probably uh, less than... 2% of the population identify themselves as non-binary gender, mm -hmm. probably much less than that. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it raises the very interesting question in terms of the legal recognition of the gender. When does this individual decide that they are non-binary? At what stage of their lives do they decide? And then what are the criteria applied? Because I think a, a very uh, important point made uh, by uh, Omni One is that somebody who's due to go into prison can automatically just say, do you know that I'm non-binary? And therefore I demand my own uh, uh, specific uh, prison uh, because I'm discriminated against. So there will be a lot of malingering. So there has to be before we start allowing people to choose what their sexual orientation is, uh, there needs to be criteria and they need to be registered as that gender mm. uh, if they're going to have the privilege of having their own prisons. The percentage is very small, as I said, probably 2%, less than 2%. And the percentage of criminals amongst them is probably also very low. So there is probably no need for specific prisons for them. And, and if they've been recognized as a non-binary or any of the LGBT community, uh, then yes, there should be a section in the prison that does segregate them because they will be uh, harassed in prison, uh, whether it be it in a male prison or in a female prison. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's, that's uh, what I wanted to say uh, on, on the topic, but a very good topic and a very real topic. Uh, thank you, Ali. Thank you, Timon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Navy wings. Navy wings and the megaphone is yours. There we go. Hello. Um, so I think that the subject is really good because uh, I actually have PCOS. Which I don't know if any other females uh, who identify as female here have PCOS or if anybody knows what it is, but it is a condition that actually I have a higher testosterone level than estrogen. Um, and so I was diagnosed at 17, right? And I know this may be, you know, it's getting to the point of someone that has a higher testosterone. I was born female. I identify as bisexual. And I also identify, 
I didn't identify as bisexual until two years ago, and I'm 29 now. And the reason I actually found that identity is because I started to understand when I kind of researched, like, what it's like to be as someone that has PCOS, because I was trying to kind of, like, push it out of my system, like, oh, I'm just a normal person. But then when I accepted that I am normal and that I'm not my condition, uh, I started to embrace kind of, okay, this is who I am and this is what I was born with and this is unfortunately what I have and this is what I'm going to have to learn how to deal with. And why do I look at women and men and both at the same time? Why does it make me happy? Now, I'm a, I was identify my, myself as someone who has unfortunately living in uh, grew up in te Texas, uh, country Texas, middle of nowhere valley. I grew up with a lot of people who had lack of education, had lack of money, etc. And probably the mindset of, you know, gosh darn, everybody's either born a man or a woman. And I remember as a kid growing up with really racist parents. I remember growing up and at 18, I escaped. I literally left and I, I just decided this is not what I want to do. This is not the kind of lifestyle I want to live. So I actually ended up moving to New York for two years. And then I moved to the UK, lived there for two years. Then I went to Thailand for two years. And when I got to Thailand, I met, I don't know if anybody here is from Thailand, but I met more male who have done from switch from male to, to having surgery to become female than anywhere else in the world. And a lot of it had to do with growing up, it would feel so victimized by their mothers for being either too petite as a man or feeling victimized by their fathers by not being manly enough because they weren't built a certain way or they weren't able to do a certain thing or they didn't. So it's very interesting that we go on the subject because, and like the doctor right here was explaining, there there's... This is a really good subject because there's so many spectrums and there's so many we're all around from the world you know and unless you travel and meet different people and you're and you stay in your bubble then you're not going to realize that as she was saying you know as she was saying we the human spirit right now if you don't you know if you're talking you might not identify as human either way we all have a conscience and we all are a being and i think once we look past what you know i mean it's kind of funny to say if we look past the interior, which I'm a floating uh, torso right now in, in, in virtual reality. But in reality, if I look past my body and what I am here and realize what I am here and here, that's where the spectrum comes from acceptance. And then when we go into criminal background, we go from, well, someone who grew up in the valley around, you know, around trailer park with country bumpkins probably most likely is going to end up doing crime or probably going to end up poor or going to probably end up this. And I think when we stop labeling people based off of their background and start helping and educating and acceptance doesn't come from you. We're not saying you have to accept you or anybody else. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to. It's a matter of respect. Now, unfortunately with, crimin with criminals, there's a spectrum of, well, a mass murder compared to here in, well, in Texas, unfortunately, if you're caught with what it's like, I think it's under an ounce or something of, of marijuana, young men and women are sent to prison for five to 10 years sometimes. And I think we have to get past the spectrum of, you know, someone's background and stop sending the wrong people to prison, which would solve a lot of the over mass population of in prisons right now. And also if we would go into an acceptance of, okay, this person say they're transgender and they uh, feel way more comfortable in a female prison. Well, some would say, well, you know, let's not give them the respect to separate them, right? Let's, they need to go with, you know, into the male prison. But at the same right, if they're just sold a little bit of weed and they're getting sentenced to 10 years and they're going to be stuck in a, in a prison for 10 years with a bunch of men and identify as women. Well, they're going to be, who knows what can happen. They're going to be, they can be raped. They can be met, murdered. They can be anything. So I, unfortunately, when we, when we want to talk about not putting in a little bit of extra money to separate them, I think what we're, we're not looking at the big picture of is how, how severe was the crime and what does the individual identify as? 
And what amount of respect do you give someone that caused a mass murder compared to selling a little bit of weed? So no matter what you do, it's going to be an individual based. And you need people who are open-minded to kind of come into our criminal system and help people instead of having people who are full of hate. Because right now in Texas, they hire any old Joe to just, say, be a warden. <laughs> Anybody can be a warden. You don't have to have respect for anyone. You can own a prison. Pri prisons are private. You're going to make millions of dollars. So throw them in the brig in a sense, right? And to end what I'm trying to say is, if our system of imprisonment became more of a spectrum of respect, understanding background, and individuality, and have counselors like this young lady over here who can help people, then that way we can kind of cross this borderline of non-binary prison, male prison, because then you would have to start going, okay, well, we need a prison for Caucasian males who committed a crime say of mass murder and then we need a, a prison for um uh black uh, transgender females that identify you 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 can't separate everybody but you do have to still respect the fact that something can happen to them so unfortunately no matter how much we talk about it it does come down to the individual and to help instead of just throwing them into the gutter and that's all i'm gonna say i'm thanks. sorry but thanks so much navy yeah. wings for your experience and your uh, thoughts. Uh, let's head over to Anastasia. Good to see you again. Just going through the list. Hi. Hi, thank you. Well, I'm going to keep it really short and just to the question there. Do you build non-binary gender prisons? No, I think that you assign them to the sex because you did say sex and gender are two different things. Correct. And then within those prisons, you can subsection them for safety reasons. But I think for, um, yeah, I think for safety reasons, you can subsection them. But I would definitely just go ahead and do one or the other. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Oops. Uh, let's go to Defender. Megaphone is yours. Feel free to speak or pass. Let's try that again. Yes. Oh, sorry. I, I have nothing to add about this, so please okay. pass. All right. Awesome. And let's go to Yellow Majesty. Hope you're joining us next week, Yellow Majesty. I'm doing it for you. NFTs on music. You betcha. Good. Thank you. And good to be here. Good to see so many of you here. I think I will just follow up Anastasia's answer pretty much. That's my point of view. But I would also like to add one thing is that I'm, I'm, I don't agree with the uh, lady from Texas uh, necessarily that it should boil down to the individual background. It should boil down to the nature of the crime, how you will actually um, manage the implications of that crime regardless of you're not you're black non-binary white or whatever i live in sweden and usually the nature of the crime uh, decides how you will separate the, the prisoners and what kind of prison we will set them so for instance if you have uh, criminals that have conducted uh, sexual crimes against women have a separate kind of prison for them because we know that if we put them together with other heavy duty prisoners that are much more, um, uh, let us say, versatile in their, in their crime register, they will most probably kill these people because of how they have been behaved towards women and children. And these people are both uh, male, Caucasians, black, Asian, and so forth. I don't see why we should uh, put any. Uh, extra emphasis on separating in how we manage non-binary people. They are human beings. If they conduct a heavy crime equally worth uh, punishment as a an individual that doesn't at that point in time consider him or herself as non-binary. I think 
I will go with John Rawls' theory of justice is that we should, in this case, derive from the actual act and the implications of that in terms of how the legal system should manage that. And I do agree with the lady from Texas that usually the people that become uh, uh, the employed by the prisoners as wardens are not the best people always. And we have had several of such cases in Sweden as well where the employees have behaved extremely bad towards uh, prisoners. So of course the prisoners, regardless if they are non-binding non or not, should be uh, treated with dignity. I don't see why the non-binary people should get more privileged than other people. That would be unfair to human beings. If you are a non-binary and if you're capable and conscious enough of what you're doing is a bad thing, you should think twice. Not live on the basis of the idea that you should be treated differently just because non-binary. Mm. That's my take on it. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Yellow Majesty. Now we have Maximum Maximus Maximus Comfort. Oh, hello. Ah, uh, yes, we can. Great. Yes. Yeah, I would definitely uh, have separate prisons and uh, whatever it takes, because uh, prisoners are not the cream of the crop. They're kept away from society for a reason. They're not gonna. They're gonna take advantage of the the females that think they're males. It, that's gonna happen. And, uh, and just like the you know the ones that think they're women, but they still have the tackle. They're gonna go. They're gonna do certain things. I would definitely keep it separate. It's gonna cost money, but that's just a human rights thing. It might as well. And and they'll be safer that way too. All right. Awesome. Thank you so that's all much. I have to say. Thank you, Maximus. Ali. Um, what would I do? Well, uh, I would not put them in the same prison with everybody else. I would maybe put them in a different section of prison and there. And, um, okay. First of all, I think it's best to get consultants, doctors, psychologists to assess them. First of all, um, see where they fit in and then sort of okay i don't know what the right word is it's the wrong word but average it off so have a separate section from everybody else and maybe put the more um masculine side on the one side the more feminine side on the other side but again after much assessment and doctors i'd um, this actually raised a concern of mine. Um, there are a whole bunch of other criminals out there. And I think society will probably start um, doing something prison-wise with non-binary and binary. So my concern is, what if predators out there start taking advantage right so all of a sudden we're gonna have bathrooms that are um mixed and a 15 year old girl goes into a bathroom or a 12 year old goes into a bathroom and all of a sudden you have predator that has called himself a non-binary i'm not saying that he is he's just using it as a topic or using it as a name and he's taking advantage to do whatever he wants to do. Um, so with taking this into consideration, it affects everything else in the long run as well, with how society is going to go against with uh, prisons as well. So th this is why I said they definitely have to be doctors, consultants, psychologists, assessing how it's going to go about. Because it's really, really serious stuff. Sorry, I think I just mm. basically put the foam on the top. Mm. I don't know if I made my point clearly. But definitely some very good points there to be concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. You, Tim? 
I, I mean, I, I've been speaking throughout, uh, but when it comes to what would I do, I, it, it's very blurry. You know, the, the, the main question that I have is what is the safest option for the assigned sex? Th that is the main thing that I'm going with. So initially I was yeah. thinking that males should be in male prisons and if you're non gender binder if you're non gender binary and you're a male born assigned male you should go to the male section because if you go to the female section and you're a criminal you do have a higher chance that raping women uh, men do tend to have high testosterone they're stronger they're able to overpower them uh, so it's it's more based okay. on the security of the assigned sex of where they will be put into that cell. However, and there's always a however with me, is that you can be a little whittle of a male put into a male prison and then, and then there's another guy who's a couple of hundred pounds bigger than you. And then there's the same issue involved is that there is a, a lack of security. Maybe maybe prisons should be based on weight rather than gender. <laughs> that, or chemistry. Maybe it should be as well. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going with weight. I think weight should should be uh, the way to go because you you can't really answer it in in this case because you get you know you get this guy who at night he's a woman and in the day he's a man. But when you say, so what sex are you? It's like, well, I'm a bit of both. Therefore, I'm none, you know. Uh, yeah. So so it's almost like you're living the the best of both worlds. And when you're bisexual, then you've got uh, equal interests in the sex. So like I said, it's very blurry. And I think it's based on safety more than the so-called human rights that you have, even though you're a criminal inside a jail, which a couple of rights should be stripped away from you. Uh, because you've you've uh, you've made your bed. So yeah. So now I will uh, let you guys speak for a couple of minutes. I have extended this event uh, a bit. So I would like to go to those who haven't spoken yet, and let's head over to Ezambium. Uh, hello. Hi. 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 Um. It, it's a very interesting topic because of it's so diverse. You've got on one hand the fact that you got to take into account the severity of the crime that they've committed. Uh, there's a lot of people who go to prison for very minute crimes and they're not going to be aggressive towards each other compared to the ones you were saying who were murderers, assaulters, uh, those kind of things. But the style of prison they're actually in is more restrictive naturally anyway. Uh, so there's less time for them to cross paths with each other. Also, the the main point of it is why are they actually separated? Because I know over here, uh, Anastasia, and I think it was Maximus, mentioned about it must be gender separated. But the whole purpose of the separation is because of, like say, the attack on two sexual parties. That tends to be the main reason. But that's such a clouded, it's not about gender necessarily when it's sexual, it's about your sexuality. So I don't completely agree with that, oh, it must be gender because that's just such a muddled topic. Also, on what um, the lady in red, uh, I can't click on you, so I can't see your name, sorry, <laughs> uh, said about, hi, said about bathrooms, um, I must uh, totally disagree about the fact that, oh, if this person says this to get into this bathroom, they can do this. Uh, it's like the argument that used to be said about if, oh, if this person is trans and they go into that bathroom, they could do anything to me. When it comes no. down to it, 
no, you that's, have that's hang, on, hang on hang on hang no, on one sec one sec let me finish I mean. and then and then you can rebuttal mm -hmm. after that's yeah, yeah, but let sure, me finish sure. my sentence that's not what i meant and I'll no no it. i know you can say that after but um the thing is with people there are horrendous people there are average good people and then there's great people using that as an argument saying oh if someone pretends to be non-binary to get in to attack someone it's not you should not punish non-binary purely because of bad people. Does that make sense? Just like with trans people, you shouldn't punish trans people saying, oh, well, this man has become a woman and I don't want him in a female bathroom because they should be separated. This person could do something terrible. It's there are bad people which can do bad things in both bathrooms. Exactly. So letting people go what they want to do, not saying, oh, you were born this way, you must use this bathroom. You were born. I, I totally don't agree with that. A bathroom is different to a jail. A jail is where you're living in a no, home No, no, I'm together. just saying that because of what she said. A bathroom, like for me, I love this... Uh, anything goes bathroom no male no female just anything and restaurants are adapting to it and i think it's great you know there's a little bit of a vulnerability that uh, a man goes into a, 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 a cubicle and then a woman right next to it but we we learn we adapt and that's it you know there's security outside there's uh, people uh, they, they can choose their surroundings and their environment that's fine but a jail is a home well, her in the home. It's a house. It's a place where you're staying. You're you're uh, going to be eating with them. You're going to be sleeping with them. Uh, you're going to be uh, bathing. You know, showering naked. Um, so I think they're completely different things. And yeah, I don't... yeah, yeah. I I was yeah. I I agree. I totally agree. Uh, but I was purely mentioning the bathroom as an afterthought because I just so strongly disagreed with what the Lydian Red was saying. But with the prisons, yes, I agree. There's so much context to so many different parts of it. Sexual orientation, degree of crime committed. Uh, you know, you have to take it all into account. All right. Ali, rebuttal. What I love for. Hi. Yeah, sorry. Um, I I was not talking about transgenders or people that do associate themselves as being non-binary. I'm talking as people, normal people, normal people. I'm talking about a normal male that is a predator and using it to the best to their advantage as as an excuse or as a name, and then doing what they want to do. So yes. So anyway, so think about this. I think about this. Um, is ambium. So I am a, well, I'm not saying I am, I'm giving you an example. So I am a non-gender <laughs> binary, right? I'm a big guy. And at night I'm a drag queen. And in the day I'm a big man. And then I go to jail and I'm like, you know what? I'm more, I'm more female than I am male. And, and then, uh, my intention is that I now get, I can rape as many women as I want. And I'm in a lot better uh, state that I would want to be with men, for example. So, so where Ali was going is that w what is their intention for being um, for being assigned of that, and should they have the right to do that? Uh, because when you mean predator, it is it is what they purposefully trying to uh, create a blueprint around what is the best thing I can do to uh, have as many women as I want. Ah, I know, I'll be non-gender binary. And that's why I said- uh, In your- because, oh, I get the, because I get the perks of it, yes. yes. Look, I'm all about protecting the non-binary, I mean, 100%. Um, anyway, yeah, what? I'm all about protecting them. I'm just saying, what if a pedophile just goes into a bathroom and says, oh, sorry, I'm non-binary, I wanna go to non-binary uh, jail? and yeah. just get the perks of it, right? Or because I feel like a woman, where in, in his head, something else is going on and he's just using it to the best of his advantage. Yeah. Under no circumstances that I mean people that are, um, that feel differently gender-wise. Yeah. So, so in uh, your yes. analogy, uh, the the let's one, the person is a, a pedophile, 
So just like uh, Maximus was saying, uh, I don't know about other countries, but in England, you know, we have prisons for paedophiles and stuff like that. So the severity of the crime uh, pushes them. So there is no, like you say, <laughs> I don't agree with saying the benefits of, but the the yeah, uh, just the people word, of the same it's, yeah, it's, the people of the same crime go to the same place, and so the, there's a bit more of a oh well these are all dangerous people so that's why they have a far more security conscious they shower individually they do this because there is the severity of the crime we are not judging them as the sex that they choose the gender that they choose whatever we are judging the severity of the crime and so if someone uh, like the lady said before about having some weed goes to prison then if they are non-aggressive, I don't see why they couldn't be in a shared gender environment. Uh, and then, obviously, if something does happen, you know, have, you know, heaven forbid, then obviously that's where they go to most severe cases. Yeah. But it, I think it's more about the crime. All right, awesome. Yeah. Thank and you. And it should be judged on the crime, hundred percent. Thanks, Esmond yes. Biam. All right, let's go to F two four nine I two R O three R. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, yes we can. Okay, good. Oh, everybody's such good talkers here. I'm not very good at talking, but it was really interesting to hear this topic. Um, For me, like, I will, I will answer the main question. I'm going to try and be really quick. Um, But before I answer that question, I just want to say, like, for me, like, I'm, I'm gay, like, I'm totally gay. For me, when I'm in mixed or in like a male, all male environment, like when I was growing up, I actually felt uncomfortable because I'm attracted to men. So when I would be in the locker rooms, I didn't like be going there. I would change and I would like look away. Like I would go and find like a bathroom stall. But I don't expect the world to change for me or anything. But I I can really empathize with people who feel like <laughs> uncomfortable in in not being in the right whatever the gender class there. Also, um, for prisons, I think what you guys were saying about like keep putting people in parts of prisons that fit the crime, I think that would be one of the most beneficial things because um, we do get people who are doing petty crimes and they, they get put with people who like, killed someone. So I definitely feel that's the bigger issue. Um, and I have two more points. One more. Has, is anybody here like familiar with androgen insensitivity syndrome? I, it's... um. I guess I should say it. <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's basically this type of. Uh, it's it's something that happens to in the womb. It's 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 when like a fetus doesn't take in, uh, uh, what do I say? Oh, testosterone at all. So they can't like use it as their body. So you'll have somebody who's born with like an X Y chromosome. So they are genetically male, but they develop as female because they're only getting like female hormones. And because of that, they develop a vagina, they develop like breasts, they develop everything growing up. However, they do have testes where their ovaries should be. Should For this is, of course, this is an extreme example, but we wouldn't put them in a male prison because they definitely, <laughs> they definitely are like female in gender, if that's how you would say, it. I don't know the correct terminology. So definitely, I think it does depend on the severity because for some people, they definitely, definitely, I would never put somebody who's like <laughs> female, they have breasts, they have everything, like I would never put them in that. But it does, it does, it is something to say that like people, when they identify as a certain gender, it's not just like some people here might think like, oh, it's just in their head, but definitely hormones, especially in the early point of development, definitely affect how your brain develops, no matter how much testosterone you have in your body now or estrogen. So I, it really does depend. And to the last question, uh, non-binary gender prisons. Um, honestly, I forget, but I think everybody has really good ideas. <laughs> I forget what my answer is. I'm not sure. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, so just remember, um, if to for uh gender is what you feel and sex is what you are so what you mentioned with the uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome that is obviously a genetic disorder that takes place with the xy fetuses Um, then the opposite of that for example we have a south african 
uh, her name is, or I, I don't even know what their pronoun is because they, they don't even allow it. You know, they, they don't, it's mm. actually illegal. But anyway, Costa Semenya um, is a middle distance runner. And she, she is an intersex uh, cisgender woman yeah. who was assigned female at birth with XY chromosomes. And that naturally elevated her testosterone levels um, where she developed more masculine features. Yeah. So, so it mm-hmm. kind of does go with the intersex gender, but also there is a genetic aspect involved. Um, Correct. And, and that's why when we are talking about, for example, this non-gender, a non-binary gender, it's more about how you feel rather than what you are. Because you can have any genitalia or you can have no genitalia, or you can have both, and you can still be called, you can still call yourself a non-binary gender. And so what Dr. Sam said, mm. which was very interesting, is that there needs to be some type of authority and regulation to assign, to to uh, authorize yourself as a non gender and as ali said you need to bring in the physicians the psychologists the um yeah the therapists and all that to to make it official in some way you know do we are mm. we entitled to just choose what gender we are and then go to a prison because we said so you know that's kind of where we're going mm. with the with the uh, um with today and it's gone off on Beyond tangents, showing how broad this aspect actually is. Um, so, like for example, being gay or lesbian uh, actually has nothing to do with your sex. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I, I I know that. Genetically, yes. I, uh, according mm. to Dylan, there is a gay gene, which um, I, I'm sure there is. I'm not sure, but 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 it's it's not something that you socially choose. Because it goes on throughout evolution, hundreds and thousands of years, millions of years. And it's just um, love is love, whatever you're attracted to, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah. But uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I, I, I guess I, I thought non- non-binary was, you know, like we have binary genders and there's like people identify like black and white, basically. Like one, one identifies female, one male. Like... I thought binary was like people who might not be in like either side they're like not on on a binary like on the two sides they're on a spectrum like somewhere in between is is that what it was they, or is they, it just more about how they call themselves yeah so how they call themselves they say you know what I'm not male or female I'm a little bit of both I'm a little bit of both and for others I'm nothing I'm not anything and that's why they don't call them he or she they call them they uh, in Europe uh-huh. So you'll find that in Europe, it's going to be a lot easier to assign non-gender binaries because we do have um, neuter, neuter pronouns. So there is mm. actually masculine, feminine, and neuter. Uh, but where people are like, we must call them they, and then there's uh, complications in like law and and uh, and law cases and attorneys. You can imagine how difficult it it, it gets when you start talking about the pronouns within it, and then you're trying, and then you're mm-hmm. you're including the plural and the individual as both they. But anyway, that we'll save that for another day. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining, mm-hmm. and uh, hope to see you at all the other events. Uh, you did an awesome job and I think you should speak a lot more. I like the way you think. Let's go to Wakanda. Are you still here? I am. I'm going to make a very quick point. I just want to say that what Dr. Sam said about there needing to be regulations um, and, and, and what Miss Ali said about there needing to be an evaluation, I think that would be some of the first steps if they were going to be going this route of trying to segregate prisons based on gender and not necessarily, sorry, based on sex and not necessarily gender. Um, gender is such a broad spectrum and being able to evaluate people, like if your driver's license and you've been 10 years non-binary and you create a, you know, commit a minor crime and you get thrown in prison or something happens, at least you have documentation that this isn't something like a guy just trying to go to a bathroom and you know pick up little girls and things like that and that's a very good point um in the united states we have family bathrooms instead of 
all bathrooms. I mean, we still have those too, but family bathrooms also give those people another option to be able to use a bathroom that makes them feel protected. And it's generally a bathroom big enough for a, a couple people, but it's more or less so if you don't identify as either, you're not putting anyone at risk either. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Wakanda. Then let's go to Sint. Hello and welcome. Hi, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Hi. Okay, good evening. I think it's an interesting topic. And I was wondering um, why um, consider gender at all in determining where to assign a prisoner? As if, if, if gender is such a fluid construct, then why consider it at all? Well, I don't think non... Okay, this is where I'm thinking now, but I don't think non-binary gender is a gender I th uh, because they are basically saying, I am not a sex. I'm not a male sex. I'm not a female. I'm not a male. I'm not a female. Okay? And I, mm -hmm. I'm therefore... Uh, none of those two. And therefore, why assign me out of the only two options? So I'm not talking about the spectrum of 78 different genders. I'm talking about the, the one gender that disassociate themselves from their assigned birth. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And then um, why group all those people together and not make like the 78 or s something you mentioned uh, different categories? Well, I have a major big problem with LGBTQI and that is uh, I don't think lesbian, gay, uh, LGBTQ, so lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, um, should even be included in the 78 genders because those are not really ones that you can make up. They are ones that you are probably born with or that you are, you know, who you attract. The other genders, you know, saying I am attracted to aliens, I'm attracted to, uh, I'm not attracted to anything, uh, I'm attracted to animals. Like now these are social constructs that you are creating in your head. Um, and, and then you go into spirit where there's some people that are attracted to only s senses of the universe. Uh, then it's a spectrum. But other than that, okay, the, the, but yeah. Th so, those, so those people, maybe, yes. But now we're talking about many different types of uh, jails. We're talking about one for men, one for female, one for non-gender, and then one for all of the genders. Uh, not, yeah, all of the, the ones that I excluded. Okay, but there should be a distinction between whom you're attracted to and what kind of gender you identify as, right? But non-binary is not about who you're attracted to. It's about how you feel exactly. about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that means that if they don't, on, do not feel that they were assigned male or female, uh, you know, as they grew up and as they decided then do they have the right to um, go into a jail cell that doesn't have either male or female uh, gender, uh, sexes? If that makes mm -hmm. sense. And the assumption is then that those other people that they're with uh, um, identify the same way that they do. Yeah, I guess so, yes. It's it's a spectrum within the non-gender as well because some non-genders say, you know what, I'm not male or female, I'm nothing. Others say, I'm a little bit of a male, I'm a little bit of a female, but I'm not w one or the other. And then others say, I'm fully mm -hmm. male and I'm fully female. It depends on the timing or the month, <laughs> you know. So so mm -hmm. there's a gender within the non-gender binary alone. Uh, th th that just makes it even more confusing. But we will save that for another time. Um, so, Sint, uh, I'm going to have to now mute you. Thank you for your thoughts and say. Um, I will go to Halion Aeon. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, um, I'll just throw in a couple of extra points. Um, yes. Not really an extension of the argument, but um, uh, one is actually, I mean, I, I, I live in the UK and actually a... a 
close relative of mine is transgender, um, f female to male. Um, and I, I know for a fact that it um, took several years before um, he you know, changed his passport sex. So the flip-flop thing, at least in the UK, you can't just say, oh, I think I'm a male now, or I think I'm a female. If there's, there are um, organisations you have to have interviews with psychiatrists and mm. psychologists, sorry, they're not psychiatrists, psychologists and things before you can um, apply to be, to have your um, passport gender mm. changed, which would then obviously feed in if you went into prison. So the flip-flop argument probably isn't too big of an argument. Uh, and the other one is I get the impression and I, that in certainly in male prisons, I think there are male prisoners there who it wouldn't matter what <laughs> genitalia you had, <laughs> they're, they're going to commit sexual violence on you. Um, you know, it's probably just as mad as you say for for many men there being in a male prison. Yeah, um, it's probably just as dangerous as it would be for a woman. So, um, you know, that's just another uh, factor in it as exactly. well. Exactly. But I mean, at the end of the day, I think. Yeah, I mean, you have to make prisons so that whatever potential conflict, violence or whatever between any two prisoners, you have to be able to detect that and manage it, don't you? Yeah. If any one prisoner starts becoming violent towards another prison, they need to be put in solitary confinement, mm -hmm. left there, you know, so uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But um, But it's a tricky one because you've got, you know, you've got several dimensions here. As you say, you know, about the, the actual, how you feel, what you're attracted to, how you view yourself, which is really important. And then your physical makeup with yeah. what you happen to have been born with. You know, there's so many dimensions and there's no clear cut answer to it, really. Yeah. yeah. And well, those feed into general society as well. I think if there's yeah. one thing we learned is that there isn't really a, a full on answer to today. And there's been a broad variety of things that we've spoken about. So that come brings us to the end of the moral dilemma. Thank you so much for being here. Ali, any final words? Thank you all for being here. Yes, it was quite an interesting topic, to be honest. And like you said, quite broad. But I think the best thing is we should always have professionals with yeah. uh, decisions. That's the best. Awesome. Thanks so much. I'm Thank giving you all for your joining. voice. It was awesome. Feel free to join at our Oh My Brain session on Thursday and join VR Digital Citizens. As for me and Ali, we are out of here. Thanks a lot, guys. I will be joining Aziz event that's taking place right now. If you guys would like to follow, you're welcome. Her event is called The Theory of Everything. It's actually quite interesting.